Hi everyone, Rodney Smith here. Um, not our usual Watch It Played surroundings, although I still am in a basement. Uh, there hasn't been a new video for a couple of days and there's not going to be, well, I guess this is a new video, a, a new gameplay video for a few days. Uh, I've gotten a cold, Luke's gotten a cold, Andrea's gotten sick, <laughs> Christy's even gotten sick. So we're recovering right now and we're also on March break, so we're visiting our in-laws, so I'm in new surroundings, but I thought I would uh, let you guys know a little bit of what's going on and uh, show you some of the games we've been playing. Um, here's one. Okay, Andrea, so what game are we currently playing? Lords of Waterdeep. Yes. Now, was this a hard game to learn, did you think? or? No. I didn't think How so. long did it take me to teach you, would you say? Like five, ten minutes? Yeah, pretty fast. And is the game playing quick? Yeah. yeah. Once we kind of got the hang of things and you understand what you're going to do next and you're kind of organized with your plans. Goes along fast. And do you feel like uh, things are going in your favor right now, or? Yeah, it does. <laughs> it does seem that way. So uh, outside the edge of the board, there's a victory point tracker, and uh, here's me, and there's Andrea down there. Uh, so she's yeah. definitely uh, whipping around faster than I am. We've got three more rounds of play left, and uh, so far, I'd say the game's going really well. So that was a little snippet of us playing Lords of Waterdeep. This is a game I just purchased on this trip. And um, it's, it's a different kind of game. Now, I mean, the game itself is a Euro game, the style of it, and that is not particularly unique. But it's set in the Dungeons and Dragons universe, and that theme is definitely a part of the game. And that is something that is a bit different, because normally you'd expect a Dungeons and Dragons game to be more of a dungeon crawling game where you're fighting monsters and tracking hit points and attack stats and defense stats. There are no dice in this game, so it's it's quite different. Uh, we'll go back and I'll show you a little bit uh, more from me and Andrew's playthrough in a moment. And of course in our series I don't review games, so I'm not going to tell you what I think about it. Um, but I will tell you, I would enjoy doing a video series in this game, I'm pretty sure. And uh, I definitely plan on playing this quite a bit more, so you can take from that what you want. Now before we go too much further, I just want to say a quick hello to Matthias and the guys and gals at Reckoneck gaming store in Dresden, Germany. I got a message from them saying they've been watching and enjoying the show and I just want to say a quick hello back to you. We're glad to have you watching the show. We hope you continue to enjoy it and learn about more great games. I also want to tell you guys great news. Great news for me. <laughs> I'm glad I can say that I've finally finished the map perk uh, that I've talked about in previous episodes. Uh, now, it's finished. It's not quite finished. I still have to decide how I want to frame it and present it. But the hard work of getting all those names and locating them on the map and getting those dots put on the map, all that's been done, which I'm excited about. So hopefully very soon I'll have the video where I actually give that to both uh, Andrea and Luke and you'll get to see that uh, perk, which you all helped to make happen. Um, the other thing I wanted to do was mention some really exciting news. Actually, it's already kind of out there in the public. If you listen to the Plaid Hat podcast, and I really would suggest you check out this uh, podcast. You might recognize that name. That's the game company that produced um, Dungeon Run and Summoner Wars and they're working on other games as well. They have a, a really good podcast that I listen to regularly and they talk a lot about um, designing games actually so you're, you're interested in that and you'd like to get some practical advice that's a great place to go to get it. Anyway they just announced something uh, which I've sort of been keeping under my hat for a while because I didn't want to say anything until them as a gaming company were prepared to say something but um, they were one of the first uh, they actually were the first publisher to partner with us on a video series. Um, they sent us a review copy of Dungeon Run free of charge when we told them we were interested in doing that series. Um, that was the first time a publisher had ever done that and that was really exciting. And then beyond that when I approached them and said I was really interested in doing a Summoner Wars uh, playthrough, they partnered with us to help support us financially and uh, help us get that series made. Um, and so that was really nice. And then I guess uh, they really appreciated what they saw from the series and what we were doing and approached us to see if we'd be interested in doing um, a video uh, overview of Summoner Wars and another rules breakdown, but we'll cut out some of the, uh, the watch it played fluff that we put in there. But basically a way for them to have a video that they can link to right in their manual. So right in the rule book there'd be uh, like a little stop sign and beside that it would say, hey you gamer, uh, don't want to read these rules, uh, prefer to learn this visually, uh, go to our website at Plat Hat Games and there you will find uh, a video giving you an overview and if you want more details a detailed instructional video of how to play this game. So again, trying to break down those barriers of entry uh, for new gamers, maybe new to the hobby, who aren't used to uh, having to sift through a 10 or 20 page rule book to learn how to play a game. If you think about 
the video game industry and how it works uh, these days, I don't think I've ever cracked open a manual to a video game in the last several years. Um, usually to sit down, that first level teaches you everything you need to know about the game. And board games don't have that. So when you have people coming over from the video game uh, hobbies and, and world trying to pick up board games, that's a, a challenge. So giving them a visual medium uh, through video is a way to break down that challenge. Flat Hat Games sees the merit of that and they've, uh, they've wanted to work with us and see how that goes. So we're we're going we're gonna to whip something together for them, and, and if they like it, then hopefully that will result in some kind of ongoing partnership with them. And certainly I hope other publishers uh, jump on this bandwagon too and uh, you know, get in touch with me. You, know, you might not be a big publisher who's able to afford you know, a big $20,000 production video um, with a bunch of special effects and stuff. Uh, so you might want to get in touch with me and see if there's something we can do to put together still a very high quality professional looking product. Um, but we're not going to charge you an arm and leg for it. Anyway, um, for those of you who watch our show, maybe some of that's of interest to you, but maybe some of, some of it isn't. But I'd just like to say to all of you who've been watching and supporting our series, you're helping to make us a success. You're helping us to become noticed by publishers. So, um, you know, our series will continue to be about playing games and showing you that gameplay and helping you make decisions. But it's opening up other doors for us, which is really nice. And uh, the fundraiser's certainly have been a big help. But the more publishers we can get to help us out as well, the less we'll have to rely on you guys um, in the future. That said, we're still a long, <laughs> probably a long ways away from being self-sufficient without your help. So I just want to say again, thanks to all the donations that we've received so far. And even while I've been on vacation here, some more have been coming in. We really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Now, uh, let's go back and show you a little bit more of the Waterdeep playthrough. Then we'll come back, and I'm done prattling about stuff you're not interested in, probably, and I'll announce the next game we're going to be doing for our next series. Well, it's been a real tug of war here. We are on the last round of play, and that's where we stand on the victory point track. A dead tie. Who will win? Who will lose? <laughs> okay, so things are down to a dead heat in Lords of Waterdeep. Uh, who's going to win? I don't know, you'll find out soon, but first I want to tell you guys what the next game is going to be for our video series. This is a game Andrew's really excited that we're going to be doing. I am too, actually, and um, a number of people have asked us to do it, so that's, it's kind of fun that we're going to be able to show some people this who wanted to see it. I'm not going to tilt the box up, hopefully you can see um, without too much glare. This is Super Dungeon Explorer. Uh, this is an interesting game because um, it's obviously very influenced uh, by miniatures, and it's made by a, a company that makes primarily miniatures, um, but it's attempting to sort of bridge the gap between a miniatures game and a board game. So there's all kinds of really nice, high quality, high detail miniatures. If you go to our Facebook page, you can see some pictures uh, from this game with the miniatures up close. But it also has um, less of the complexity that most miniatures games have. I just finished reading over the instructions for War Machine, for example. That's 80 pages of rules, whereas this has about 20 pages of rules. So. Uh, it's a little more manageable that way, and so we're going to uh, do an episode where we teach you how to play the game, and then we're going to actually play through the game. What I'm hoping to do, uh, much like if you remember in our Wrath of the Shardalon playthrough, if you watched that, we actually had one of the heroes totally controlled um, by our viewers. Actually, I think we had two of the heroes. In this case, we'll probably do at least one of the heroes. We'll be totally controlled by you guys, the viewers, and we might have an additional hero as well. Don't worry, I know sometimes people think if we have viewer-controlled characters and it slows down our ability to make the episodes but honestly I probably wouldn't want to do more than one turn at a time for this particular playthrough so that'll work out just perfectly having us take a break give you guys an episode, uh, some time to think about what you want to make for your move for the following episode. So hopefully you'll enjoy seeing us play through this game uh, like Mansions of Madness. This is a game where one player controls all the monsters and the baddies and uh, that will probably end up being me and all the rest of the players will be controlling heroes. Uh, so you guys will once again be teaming up with Andrea and Luke to try and defeat me. <laughs> and man, I need a win guys because things have not been going well. Losing Summoner Wars, currently losing What's My Word. Oh yeah, that's right. What's my word? We're probably going to try to wrap that up first before we get started on this. So we'll do What's My Word much faster than we've been doing because I've been trying to do Summoner Wars and What's My Word. So it's kind of slowed down the What's My Word. It'll give me time to sort of get this game set up. Um, there's been a new FAQ released for this game and some errata has been changed. So I need to make sure I've got all the rules down for this. Um, this is a game that has prompted quite a few rules questions online. So I'd really like the video that we make explain the game 
to be a very definitive answer to any people's questions about how this game is played. So having the extra time to just do the Watch It Played series on What's My Word, which is a little bit lighter, and to be able to work on setting this up will be a big help to me and hopefully will produce um, a better quality series for you guys. So let's go take a look and see how uh, Lords of Waterdeep wrapped up. And when I see you again, hopefully we'll be playing more What's My Word. And I'll be preparing during that time to bring you Super Dungeon Explore. Andrea, what's the matter? You won. <laughs> but not by a lot. About six points. About six points. Next time, I'm going to be the one winning. We'll see about that.